Hey friends, today we are going to do a practice for back pain. Ah, the not so beloved back pain. We'll bring in some really nice yoga poses to ease the tension around the back of the body by targeting areas that might refer pain towards our back. So, you know, sometimes the lower back being in pain doesn't really mean that there's an issue with the low back. Maybe it's something with the hamstrings or hip flexors. Same thing for the upper back. Maybe it's something with the shoulders or the chest. So we're just gonna get it from all angles and go ahead and get started seated. I have two blocks with me here, right here. So if you have two blocks, go ahead and grab them. And if you don't, you might grab some books or you might just release the idea of blocks. You can totally do this practice without blocks. They're just little aids in our practice. So I'm gonna use a block underneath my hips and kind of support my hips so that my knees don't have to bend to their full extent. And go ahead and place the hands on your thighs facing down, close the eyes, and begin stacking the spine as if it was a tower of dimes. So a lot of times we're like, the leaning tower of Pisa, but see if you can draw it back, aligning your head over your hips. You might draw your navel in slightly to protect and lengthen the lower back. Let's go ahead and just start with full yogic breath. As you breathe in, the belly fills up. And as you exhale, it releases, the navel draws back. And breathing in through the nose, feel it draw down to the depths of your navel and begin to rise up into your low ribs. Exhale, drawing the navel in and relaxing the rib cage. Inhaling again into the depths of your belly, feeling it rise up this time towards your chest. Exhale, navel draws in. Continuing with the breath, filling yourself up from the bottom up towards the shoulders. Something really interesting about how we breathe is that if we only breathe into the belly, we might experience upper back pain because there's no motion in the muscles. But we also might experience upper back pain if we only breathe into the upper back and the shoulders, making it a really short and shallow breath. So the idea of Full yogic breath is to breathe in and expand in all directions. And as you exhale, it's a softening of the muscles, a drawing in of the lower abdomen. And using your breath to fill up every crevice within your torso. Exhaling to stabilize the spine, draw the navel in. And start with our hands at heart center, both palms come to touch. Allow the gaze to open or drift across the fingertips. As you inhale, let's just open our arms out wide. Lift the hips off the mat. Exhale to turn towards the right. Keep the arms out wide. Inhale back to center, maybe lifting the gaze. Exhale, turning towards the left. One more time. Inhale, arms become soft, heart opens. Exhale, draw the navel in, twist towards the right. Keep the chest nice and broad, nice and wide. Inhale, arms back to center. Draw the navel in, lengthen the lower back, begin to turn towards the left. Inhale, back to center. As you exhale, relax your hips back down onto your heels or your blocks. We'll take the right arm underneath the left and bind the arms like eagle arms. You can hug yourself, fingertips reaching back towards your shoulder blades, or maybe you begin to bind the arms fully and reach them up towards the ceiling. As you do this, can you drop the chin down? And with the focus of your breath, can you place it in your upper back, breathing in, feeling the breath press in between the shoulder blades, widen the back of the body. And as you exhale, draw the navel in, begin rounding. Inhale the arms out wide. Left arm scoops underneath the right, bind the arms around each other, or reach back for your shoulder blades, begin to lengthen up through the elbows, drop through the chin. Take your breath inside of the back of the body between the shoulder blades. Exhale, navel draws in, begin rounding. 
Inhale the arms out wide. This time as you exhale, draw the navel in and draw the elbows down, cactusing the arms. I want you to feel your middle back engaging. Right? See if you can release your traps. We'll inhale again, arms reach out wide. Imagine you have two ropes in each hand. As you exhale, draw the navel in, draw the elbows in, pulling strongly. One more time, inhale, reach out. Exhale, draw the navel in, draw the elbows in. And gently release the hands on the mat. We'll shift towards hands and knees, shifting our block over towards the side. Moving towards Chakra Vakasana, lengthening out our back. This is a great go-to pose for any back pain. We start here, taking a breath in to elongate our spine. As you exhale, draw the navel in, release the forearms down first. Gently send the hips back. Inhale, coming forward. Articulate the neck out long, just like the spine. Exhale, navel draws in, rela release the forearms down. Feel the chin tuck in slightly. So the entire spine rounds. As you inhale, the entire spine lengthens. Come up to your hands and knees, broaden the chest. Exhale, draw the navel in, relax the forearms down first. And your chin tucks in. Go ahead and shift forward. Draw the navel in to make space between you and the mat and we'll step the right foot up. Go ahead and lift the back knee. Seal the heel down, and as you inhale, reach the arms out, straighten through the front leg. Relax the hands down by the sides. Make sure the back knee is comfortable, so if you need to widen the stance east to west, go ahead and do that for yourself. Feel the weight of the back foot rolling into the heel and the balls of the feet. Micro bend in the back knee if that feels right for you. As you inhale, let's go ahead and draw the elbows in by our ribs, just like we're pulling ropes again and taking a bend in the front knee. Lift through the chin. Exhale, draw the belly in, straighten through the front leg, press away with the palms, tuck the chin in. So it's an emphasis of the movement of the breath as you inhale. The spine lengthens, we're pulling the elbows in to lift the chin, expand the chest. Exhale, navel draws in, full spine rounds softly, press the arms away strongly. One more time, inhale, pull nice and strong, fiercely drawing the ribs up as the elbows draw back. Exhale, navel draws in, flip the palms, press away, tuck the chin. Go ahead and bring both hands to your heart. Flip the back heel up, we'll drop it down onto the ground. If you have your two blocks, you can place them alongside the feet. And they'll just help us lift the ground up. We'll start to lengthen out the front leg, coming into half splits. And Wherever you are, whether your hands are on the blocks or on the mat, go ahead and try to walk them back so you can stack the shoulders over the hips. Keep the right toes alive and drawing back towards your forehead. Lengthen through the spine. Three breaths here. Sitting with whatever sensation or emotion arises and using your breath to move through it. Come back into a lunge. Plant your hands down on the ground or on the blocks. Draw the belly in to make space. Draw the right knee back. The left foot will step forward. Press into the blocks or the mat. As you inhale, lift up, straighten the front leg. Bring the arms out wide. Exhale, seals the right heel down. Reach the arms out in front of you. Palms flipped upwards. As you inhale, draw and pull the arms alongside the ribs. Bend the front knee. Exhale, pressing away, draw the navel in, round the spine. So there's some strength in these movements, right? It's not just like an inhale and exhale. It's like a really strong pull and lift. And a super strong press away, draw the navel in, tuck the chin in. Two more times, inhaling to open the chest. Exhaling to press away, lengthen the front leg. Final round, inhale. Exhale. Let's flip the back heel up and drop the right knee down to the ground. If you have your, your two blocks, go ahead and walk them back with you. We'll elongate that front leg. Make those toes brighten up a bit. So I know this pose isn't the most fun, but stay present. Draw the toes back as if they're trying to reach towards your nose. And with a slight tuck of the chin, feel the spine elongate. Nice. 
Inhale forward, coming into your lunge. Place the hands down onto the blocks or the ground, and we'll draw the belly in. Draw the left knee back. Kick the right leg forward, drop the left hand down to a block or the mat. We'll use our inhale to lift our right arm up. Keep pressing through the left arm and using the left shoulder as a way to draw back. Inhale the right arm up, open through the chest. See if you can use the right shoulder blade to drive into the spine, open a little higher. Release the hand down to the mat or the block. Use your blocks if you have them. We'll lengthen the back leg and seal the back heel. Go ahead and come up to standing, hands at heart center. And as you exhale, draw the navel in, reach forward with the crown of the head. You can pause here, releasing the hands down to the ground with a semi-bent knee, drawing the right hip back. Or you can release the hands down to your blocks, press away, and draw the feet together as if you were trying to crunch the mat up in two. Drawing front heel towards back heel. And then gently release the left knee down. We'll kick the right foot back. Extend the left leg forward. Seal the right hand down onto the ground or a block. Inhale the left arm up. Use your shoulder blades as a way to dig into the spine. Open the chest. And gently release the left hand down to a block or the mat. Lift up your right knee, seal the right heel down. We'll come up to standing. Think long, straight spine. Bring your hands to heart. Gently as you exhale, draw the navel in. Reach forward. You can release your hands down to the ground with a bent knee, drawing the left hip back. Or you can release the hands down to the block, still drawing that left hip back, trying to square the hips up towards the top of the mat. Beautiful, bend the front knee, take a step forward with the right foot and we'll come all the way down onto the ground. Roll onto your back, grab a block so that you have it with you and just set it near the side. And as you come down on the back, think about finding a comfortable space for your spine. So if the lower back isn't comfortable, maybe you can flatten the spine or draw the belly in. If the upper back isn't comfortable, you can scoot the shoulder blades underneath you. We'll go ahead and just stack the right ankle on top of the left knee and draw in for reclined pigeon's pose. Let's keep both feet alive, flexing both feet. Try to energetically press the right knee out. So right here we are targeting our piriformis muscle, the infamous muscle usually responsible for sciatic issues. And sciatica is interesting because it can stem from either a crushed disc in the lower back, it can stem from too much sitting, it can stem from many things. But the idea is that we're just giving space in the piriformis muscle for that sciatic nerve to move through. And our sciatic nerve is actually the biggest nerve, one of the biggest nerves that we have in our body. So it's an important one. Go ahead and cross the knees completely. Bring the feet in towards the hands. Maybe you keep the hands around the knees and just draw in. It's a little bit deeper towards the piriformis muscle. And sciatica can come as pain in the lower back, radiating down the leg, or it can originate in the hip, radiating down. And yoga just seems like an easy fix. Let's go ahead and unwind the legs, stack the left heel on top of the right knee, flex both feet, bring the hands behind the thigh, and gently draw in. If you're at your desk during the day and you feel like you're having some sciatic discomfort, you can do this pose in your desk chair as well. A lot of yoga poses you can do at your desk without anyone thinking that you're the weird yogi in the office. But you can just stack opposite ankle on opposite knee and lean forward as if you were in a desk and it feels great. Let's go ahead and cross the knees completely. Reach up for the knees or for the feet. Draw the legs in. Beautiful. Take one more breath in and out of the nose. Release the feet from the hands. Release the hands out to the sides. Take a full breath in. And as you exhale, draw the knees up towards your heart and reach them over towards the right. If you have a block, 
and your left shoulder lifts off the ground. You can stabilize the shoulder joint by drawing a block underneath the knees, giving a little support. You can use a book, maybe a pillow to support the knees. Anything you have just allows us to ease into this. Two more breaths here. Gently draw the navel in, guide the knees back up to center. Take your block over to the opposite side, take your breath in. Exhale, drives the knees up and over towards the left, supporting the knees if the right shoulder pops up off the mat. Silence the mind by closing the eyes. Find the breath. And then two more rounds of the breath. Inhale, brings the knees back up to center. Exhale, melts the entire body on the mat. Let it splay out, allow the shoulders to soften. And we'll take our little Shavasana, our treat. Right? Or I like to call it our adult nap. <laughs> Allow the focus to remain inward on the motion of the breath within the body. And begin letting go, whether it be your attachment to this practice or connection to anything outside of what is happening right here, right now. And begin settling in. And you can stay here for longer, or if you're ready to awaken, again, moving your fingertips and toes, drawing your legs into your chest with your arms around the shins. We can rock from side to side to give our lower back a little massage. And as you're ready, roll all the way over towards the right. Come back up to seated. And grow the length of your spine upwards towards the ceiling and draw both hands at heart center. Know that no matter the way, no matter the obstacle, the light and love within me will always strive to cultivate the light and love within you. Namaste. Thank you so much for practicing with me. It's been a pleasure to share these practices with you. Go ahead and let me know how this worked for you. Share, don't be afraid to share what didn't work for you, right? That helps me too. <laughs> if y'all are ever in Austin and would like to practice with me live, come and visit me at the Treehouse. I'll be here teaching. And if you'd like to stay in touch with my other events and workshops, you can Find all of that information at shaktiyogatherapy.com. My name on Instagram is Savanasana. See you next time.